been a good it's been a good couple weeks since we've done the Wide World Motorsports podcast. Here with yes. co-host Michael Wallace, and, it, and it's been a while. And this episode being recorded for the week of January seventeenth, twenty twenty-one. Yes, it's been a long while. Happy New Year! Yeah, Happy New Year! And it's what the the as of recording, it's the seventeenth. I guess 17th. it still counts. Yeah. And, yeah, and already, well, you know, the the year of motorsports is uh it's been interesting already. It is. I mean, there's been lots of interesting news at the beginning beginning of the year. I mean, everybody I think some people think that uh when racing ends at the end of the year and they have this off season and they have this big long break, but really it's uh some That's of what the I busiest, used to think too. It's the busiest time of year really for them and and I've heard uh one engineer say uh, you know, uh, Christmas is an inconvenience. So, <laughs> if any, that's, yeah. <laughs> their, that's their mindset. You know, they take a couple of days off, but then they're right back at the race shops. A couple of years ago, I used to say, for me, <laughs> for some random reason, I'd be like, "Oh, the the uh, Barrett Jackson Auto, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Auto uh, auction was my yep. in my. It always felt like that for me was the official start for me spiritually." inside emotionally that was the start of the motorsport season i don't know why because i'd see mike joy he maybe he'd be there commentating it's yep. like okay like see some cars um, well you'd always see you'd always see rick hendrick there buying so, something yep. um jeff gordon would be yep. there occasionally uh you'd <laughs> so you see, know you'd see it tons of yeah, even you, nascar cars or other yep. start car stock car related things maybe a yeah. driver would be selling his car or something like that and there's just there's other guys too. Uh, oh, other yeah, maybe you see get, a celeb in there. Yeah, you get celebrities. You get I saw uh, McConaughey once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's um, like all right. Gary Pratt from Pratt and Miller is was a is a very big regular there. Uh, Pratt and Miller, of course, built the Corvette and and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I remember that. I haven't watched Barrett Jackson in a while, but I do remember that was. You know, the new year, January, you knew that was coming up. And then I knew Speed Weeks was like the next week usually or the next couple of weeks. I was like, okay, like that means it should be Speed Weeks too. Back in the day when there was the uh, the Thunder pre-testing that NASCAR used to do, I miss – they would that would have probably been sometime this week if that still existed. Uh, <laughs> like that, yeah. that would have been cool, you know. Yeah. But I always thought that was it. But then I was like, okay, well – there's, there is the Snowball Derby early December, but there's other stuff too. We were even talking earlier about the uh, Asian Le Mans series, you mm -hmm. know, and, and all the other European series that they, they also do some stuff early in January. Yeah, you get Asian Le Mans series, which is typically a winter series. They're going to be coming up here soon. I can't, don't have it on the top of my head, which I, I hate, and I always feel like I should remember all the stuff. But there's always a lot so of stuff to on. remember. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's lots that start at the beginning of the year, like you said. I mean, we just had this past weekend uh, the Dubai 24 hours. We had the Chili Bowl. We, we had the Chili Bowl this past Make weekend as well. Well, weekend week is a whole week long thing, and I'm sure we'll get into that more. Uh, you have. Yep. Rolex 24 at Daytona. That's and then is that next coming weekend up or two weeks? This uh, it the actual one is in two weeks. This weekend is uh, which is the, just what as good. would be the roar um, and the race for pole. Yeah, which is just as good. Yeah, and then at the end of the month you'd have Bathurst 12 hours Intercontinental yeah. GP3 Cup. So, I caught that one last year and I think the year before too. There, I remember there was and, that oh, wicked wreck that one race. year. Yeah, and it's a great race because it's kind of backwards to everything else. Everything else either races starts in the day through the night, back into the day, or starts mm -hmm. in the day and goes into the night. But Bathurst, Bathurst starts in the dark <laughs> and goes to the light. Which That's awesome. Is, it, yeah, it's I'd rather so cool. that. Yeah, it's a it's a way. Yeah, because you get to see the end, right? Like. Uh, you know, Sebring or, or or Petite, yeah, there's a lighting on the track and the cars have lights on them, but the best racing is in the dark, right? The, yeah. the last lap, the last couple laps, the last hours all in the dark, so it's hard to see. I think but it's with, really cool with, when a place has a lot of lights, personally. See, and, and, and I like that. I like a place that has lights because not, then you can see the racing, i.e. Uh, Daytona 24. It feels uh, weird, you though. Can, you can stay up all night and watch the race, yeah. whereas Le Mans, 
at night. It's really at night. But see, I don't like all the lighting because I think it it's harder in the dark or more challenging. Right. In the dark. For, for the driver, for the driver. skill side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously. Yeah. Um, but j- you know, I remember going to Daytona for my first time, like, even just all the other times when I'm there and there's a night race, mm-hmm. it was like, there holy freaking lights around this place. You can drive, you'll, you'll see it from like, you'll see it from, from quite from a wide, ways away. Like it is, it is pretty awesome. And I, and I remember like, I, I'm not like, I, I start getting, no, I'll be funny. I start getting choked up. <laughs> I remember the last time I looked at Daytona and I purposely, <laughs> you, you almost look back to appreciate the marvel of it. It's like, yeah, like you just, I, like, it's like the, the office reference of the, uh, it's like one of those moments where you pull out the camera, the memory camera, you know, one of those right. things where it's like, I'm going to, you got to remember this, but yeah, like, I, I love me some of that, and we're going to be seeing. Next thing you know, it, it's going to be uh, the clash. Speaking of that, yeah, I mean that happens pretty soon as well. Uh, everything's starting Freaks. soon. Yeah. <laughs> like there it's wasn't like, much of a break this year. Right. Well, I guess in the middle, but it just doesn't feel like there was a huge break. And I think we kind of we, the Wide World More Sports podcast also kind of went with that too. It's like mm. we didn't plan on taking a season three finale at any point, but we did. So now we're this is the season four season premiere. So yeah, uh, well, it was nice to have a bit of a break this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody. I was busy with work, and and I just I wasn't even planning on taking the entire time off. I was actually going to just have four or five days off and then go back to work but i was burnt out i was burnt out so it was nice to have a bit of a break yeah nothing wrong with uh taking a step out and same thing with the i racing we were talking a little bit about that before the Mm -hmm. uh before we started recording you know that that also has its its low peaks too yeah and uh i i really did (laughs) Uh, if you go into the iRacing achievements or trophies, uh, I, I'm halfway to a sad achievement that I, I don't, don't even know if I want to admit publicly. Uh, or but there, there, there are achievements called "You Need an Intervention," and uh, or there's the first achievement is you might have a problem, and then the second achievement is you need an intervention, and that's nice. It's depending on how many days in a row you play iRacing. So oh. I'm halfway to the second one or oh, I was getting halfway to the second one. I was like, you know what? I need to, I need you just to take not a break. play for 60 days in a row and I need to take a break. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So I've also limited my eye racing in the off season. Um, cause we are, yeah. we have some associations with mm-hmm. a, a league that we're, we actually kind of have a hand in. Well, at least uh, I did for the, the season three uh, street stock series with the schedule. But, um, I'm sure there'll mm-hmm. be some more things. If I'm if I'm going to be in a race in a street stock race with you, I'm sure I'm going to th- uh, throw you some uh, <laughs> throw you some uh, admin priv some yeah. privileges. Yeah, yeah. So there was that, and it's yeah. It was a lot of people maybe uh, don't know about the off season how how lengthy it feels. Maybe for some people it's long. For maybe maybe some people it doesn't stop and. Sometimes it's good to, as I said, again, you know, take a step back and now, now getting into it though, it's like, there, there's so much cool stuff going on right now. And you even yeah. look at the IMSA series and, and with how that's going to start out and the first few races of the season could be very interesting. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to IMSA this year. There's a lot going on. Um, to set it up to to honestly be one of the probably one of the best years uh, in a in a while and a, which is awesome and unfortunate at the same time mm. because unfortunately there's a very real and likely possibility that it'll be a season behind closed doors again or semi closed doors um, which is sad because there's some big names. Uh, but uh, what, what would you for some of the people that are unfamiliar with some of that stuff? Not, not, I'm not pulling a Michael Scott because I don't know. I know what you're talking about, but just to right. allow because that's an interesting itself 
just for a brief blurb on that, kind of some of the behind the door stuff. A lot of other people, I mean, if you're a NASCAR fan, you would know some stuff that happens behind the door. And well, every I mean, series you, has something like that. Yeah, we're getting there's just big there's big names signing up this year. Um, you know, one Kevin Magnuson, former Haas F1 team driver. That's that's big. It's big to get. You know, we have Felipe Nasser in here, uh, which he raced Formula One as well. Um, but to be completely honest with you, I don't think he's probably as big a name in North America as Kevin Magnussen, um, mainly because Kevin drove for a, a, an American team. But then in an IMSA, particularly, obviously we know the Magnussen name from his dad Jan, who was a factory Corvette driver for years. But you have, so you got these big names coming in. You have teams moving or switching cars. Like you have Meyer Shank Racing with Curb Agajania stepping up to DPI in their Acura. And then, you know, uh, one of the, probably one of the bigger, more interesting things about IMSA this year is the inclusion of the LMP3 class. Uh, you know, before we had, we had P2s. Oh, sorry, we had DPIs, the P2 class, GTLM, and then GTD. In Europe, you know, going back to what bringing up some of the European stuff, you have ELMS and ALMS, um, which is uh, European Le Mans series and Asia Le Mans series. And they run a series similar to what we run here in IMSA, but not the same not the same in some bigger aspects of they only run P2 cars. They don't have DPIs, obviously. Okay. Um, so they run P2s, and they only run GTE cars, which are GTLM cars in, in North America. Um, and they have a they still have two classes in GTE. Like we have two classes in, in GT for IMSA. We have GTLM and we have GTD, which are GTE cars and GT3 cars. Uh, I know I'm kind of probably being a little bit confusing, but in Europe and in Asia, their GT classes only split up by pro and amateurs. So they have GTE cars, GTE pro, and GTE am. But then they have LMP3 cars. We have an LMP3 series in IMSA called Prototype Challenge, which used to run, they look like little prototypes. Uh, they were open cockpit. Uh, they ran in conjunction with all of the IMSA stuff. Uh, but then with the inclusion of LMP3 cars, now they, they, would, they were running them, the LMP3 cars and the Mazdas together. And then they kind of weeded out the Mazdas because it was an old car um, and LMP3 is, is the future, but now they've allowed that class into into the top level um, probably to make up car count, right? We lost Porsche from GTLM. We weren't sure if BMW was sticking around. We lost the Fords last year, so GTLM was looking pretty bleak. But um, so they entered this class. Now this is a very interesting class, very, very gentleman driver based. Um, some interesting rules, but you got some big names in that class. So you know Joao Barbosa, he's back for the season in LMP3. Uh, you know uh, Mustang sampling driver, champion. So that's a big name. Performance Tech, who's a big name in P2. They've got a car in. They've got Cameron Castles this year, who's excellent. And then the big one. This one's huge to me because uh, – and it's Core Autosport and John Bennett. Now, they ran a prototype car for years and did really well. John uh, Bennett is the gentleman driver in that pairing, him and Colin Braun. And John has been one of those guys, is a true definition of a gentleman driver. His his job or his company is core. And I believe they do uh, composites stuff like um, work with different sorts of carbon fibers and whatever to make. I, they do a lot of auto industry stuff. And then you have Colin Braun, who's, or Brown, who's amazing. John's team stepped up to... DPI, 
with uh, the they bought the Nissans from Extreme Speed and they ran those for a bit. But also Core Autosport ran Porsche North America, the GTLM team, who's now no longer there. And uh, you know, last year, the year before, John retired, so he wasn't racing. Uh, but he's back, and he's got Colin, which is awesome. George Kurtz, who Colin would team with in uh, World Challenge, uh, or whatever it's called now, because it changes names <laughs> like every year. And they're teamed up with um, Matt McMurray, who's a wheel man. Uh, and in LMP3 as well, you have Riley Motorsports ca- stepping up out of uh, having GT cars. Or they used to always run... Um, the uh, Ben Keating car, the the for a while it was the Viper. He had the Viper program. Do you remember that? Old school. I, I oh. Well, he did actually. So you say old school. So let's go on a tangent because I haven't talked about this for for weeks. Uh, Bill Riley ran, helped run the original Vipers back in the late '90s and early 2000s. He mm-hmm. was part of that at the way at the very beginning. And and then uh, have the opportunity to help revamp it again and do it again. And then with Ben Keating, uh, Riley Motorsports built a GT3 version because um, if anybody knows Ben Keating, uh, anything about Ben Keating, it was always Viper Exchange. That was one of Ben Keating's um, uh, dealerships. But uh, they've uh, Ben Keating's running in the WEC, so uh, Riley Motorsports stepped up to LMP3. And then in GTLM, like, there's... This is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm excited. There's so much. It's ridiculous. And it's, the Rolex it's ridiculous. is ramping up to be, like, to get that butter. I don't know. This one, this one's like I'm excited for. There's a well, couple, yeah, of, like, there's a couple teams that uh, are going to be really cool to watch. Yeah, I mean, last year, 38 cars. That was the Rolex car count, 38 cars. And then this year, we're at 50. Actually, I think we're at 52 now. This this uh, entry list that I have here, I think, is a little is is behind, and I think we're up to 52 cars. Mm-hmm. But it's gonna be, you know, you have Corvette racing in GTLM. You have BMW back, and Let's just talk about the drivers in GTL. So, sorry, you have Risi Competizione in for this one. He, they're running their Ferrari, of course, and then you have WeatherTech Racing running with Proton Competition, who have stepped up. The na- the drivers on this list, uh, like it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you have you have Antonio Garcia. Jordan Taylor, Nikki Katzberg, Nick Tandy, Tommy Milner, Alexander Sims, John Edwards, Jesse Krona, Augusto Farfus, Marco Whitman, Connor DiFilippi, Bruno Spangler, Philip Ang, Timo Glock, uh, James Collado, Jules Gannon, uh, Davide Regan, Jiminari Bruni, Kevin Estra, Richard. Th- this class for six cars is going to be the best class to watch in, in the 24. Like, okay. these guys are, I mean, and then you look at GTD, and and it's just full. It is just full, full, full of top-level uh, sports car drivers. I mean, this isn't some little hick series that maybe the, <laughs> that people thought it was at one point, right? This is, this is full of the best guys. Lots of Americans, lots of Canadians. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, tons of everybody else. And there's guys in here that really, um, I, I don't know how if getting emotional about it, but th- they're the guys that are like the backbone of this series, especially in GTD. You have, you know, uh, Tim Pappas, Black Sw- Swan Racing. That's his. You know, he pays for that. Um, you have. Uh, ben Keating, he's here running for TF Sport and Aston Martin with Richard Restbook. Um, you know, Ben's probably helping fund that pretty good too. Then you have Turner Motorsport, right? You have uh, Bill Turner. 
that's a big not Bill Turner. I can, oh my goodness, I can't even think of his name at this at the moment. Uh, but Turner Motorsports, they've been there forever, and they really support that series running in their their BMWs, right? There's just some really big, and then like John Potter with Magnus Racing, you know, that's his. Um, yeah, there's just a lot to really be happy for or look forward to with this this series. This there's going to be a couple of cool entries just off the top of my head for the Rolex, and that's uh, once my freaking mouse lets me get down to it. I have sweaty hands. Um, nice. <laughs> Pe- Pepo Durrani, Felipe Nazar. And yep. uh, Chase Elliott making his Rolex 24 debut. Yeah, uh, that's with, um, with AXR. Yeah, Action Express Racing. That's good. Yeah. So Felipe Nasser, he's he, you know, for BMW, uh, not BMW Sauber. Jeez, I'm aging myself there. Sauber, uh, Formula One team. You know, he's he's great. Mike Conway, uh, champion Toyota driver in WEC, IndyCar race winner. Um, uh, champion in IMSA back back in the day, like there's no slouch, and then you have um, Chase of, in there. I'm curious how he's gonna go in that car. I wonder what kind of stint they'll throw him in. Night, it'll be at yeah, the night, right? Yeah. <laughs> Probably, but <laughs> Chase, I mean, Chase is a good road course guy, right? So sure, no, no doubt. I yeah, no, no worries there. Just him. I wonder if he's had any testing in that. Just obviously being in a different car. He has, he has I think. Okay, yeah. Obviously being in a different car is that's going to be interesting. But hopefully, yeah. with the experience that he had at the uh, the Daytona Road Course yeah, this past but, season in in the Cup. Yeah, but don't count out One the forty eight <laughs> car, the yeah. Action Express car. Um, sorry, you have Jimmy Johnson, a uh, seven time NASCAR champion. Kamoi Kobayashi, uh, Formula One driver, IndyCar driver, uh, champion WEC Toyota driver. Oh, Simon Pan- Pagano, uh, IMSA champion, uh, Indy 500 champion, IndyCar champion, former former um, Peugeot factory driver in WEC, uh, Mike Rockenfeller, Audi factory driver, Audi 24-hour Le Mans champion, uh, DTM champion. Uh, I don't know. There's what one, two, three, four, or five. There's 15 championships in that car. <laughs> yeah. Like, right? How do you like? That's insane. Um, you know, three of them have amazing sports car um, experience. Amazing. I mean, Kamoy's won the 24 hours of Daytona in Wayne Taylor Racing's car twice. Uh, Simon Pagano's uh, won lots when he he used to drive the old uh, Acuras in LMP1. He drove the Peugeot and and LMP1. Like, yeah, there's there's so much. Uh, like uh, it's like almost like who 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 have we missed? You know what I mean? There's so many. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Because then I look down here and I go, oh, AJ Allmendinger, yeah. uh, Juan Palma. Well, oh my goodness, Juan, Juan Pablo, Pablo Montoya, Montoya. Oh, Juan <laughs> um, Olivier Pla, he's uh, IMSA champ, twenty four hours of Le Mans winner, uh, he's huge. Dan Cameron, IMSA champ, uh, he's won tons. A very American driver, but he's won tons over here. You know, there's, there's that's just, just Daytona. You know, it goes into uh, that's what I mean. Uh, there's so much more after oh, uh, d- in I the fr- season that. I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention Hill. Scott Dixon. Scott Dixon. There you go. He's right in the Ganassi Cadillac. Mm-hmm. Shocker. Uh, you know, Indy Indy 500 champion. Indy car seven Indy car championships. Seven or six. Six Indy car champions ch- championships. Oh, look at that one. Uh, Sebastian Bourdais. Four Indy car championships. <laughs> like it's. It's insane. I, I got to stop talking about it because I just keep seeing a guy I got to talk about. Oh, look, Robert Kubica, Formula, former <laughs> Formula One driver. Yeah, yeah. Like, we got it covered. I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it, there's there's going to be so much. I feel like just it's going to be so exciting watching that first race, but there's going to be more to come. Yeah. Yeah, the I, whole season. It'll be a good year. It'll yeah. Good year. It, oh, it's going to be a great year. And. 
and uh, hopefully, I shouldn't be able to catch every race, but uh, I'll be able to hopefully watch that. I know uh, we'll, you'll have that covered here, and, and uh, there's uh, there's always going to be a spot for IMSA here on the Wide World Motorsports. Um, and, and then as and as we're talking about that, you know, the, the schedule and whatnot uh, could be up, up in the air with uh, IndyCar. We'll just throw uh, that yeah. in there. With IndyCar and the St. Pete's yep. being basically, postponed. it's it's been yeah, it's been postponed or I the way I see it, it's just another way of saying canceled. But well, they've got it slotted here for April twenty fifth, so, so I don't yeah, know. It, it's so. But we'll see, we'll see what happens because who knows all that stuff. But um, yeah, so that's happened in the world of IndyCar, and then with that as well, Marco Andretti announcing mm-hmm. which. I don't know. I don't think it was random, but him announcing yeah. that he'll no longer be full time IndyCar driver. I guess that maybe threw people off. Uh, yeah, because it kind of I think came out of nowhere a yeah. little bit. Um, Marco, 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 Marco's interesting because you know a lot a lot of people will be quick to say that Marco's there because of his name, and I'm going to say it probably doesn't hurt. And Marco's talented, no. yeah. but it just never, it just never manifested into what it should. Right? Um, it's that's a hard. That's got to be a hard one to follow. Like, how do you follow your grandfather Mario, and then your your dad Michael? Like, how do you follow those two and expect to be good? You know, it's a little bit like Dale Jr. and senior right Right. how do you how do you follow uh, somebody like dale senior now let's put it this way just take dale senior and say dale jr was just as successful (laughs) and then put and then dale's son you know steve whatever dale would name his son (laughs) if you had a son or or or, uh Junior, okay, sure, yeah, yeah. If if junior, junior had, had a kid. Uh, hmm. had, well, like a a a, a son who was old. Let's name him Dale raise. again. Yeah, Dale, Dale the third. Um, <laughs> Dale Junior, Junior. Yeah, you know how would you follow that? How yeah, would yeah. you? You know, you can't fill. Those are hard shoes to fill. Well, so for for the people out there that say, "Well, why can't his daughter race?" Okay, sure, we'll throw that in there too. Sure, his daughter. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't work because Dale's not his father. Oh, so I see what you mean. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's that the logic, that, folks. <laughs> yeah, Mario was super good, but yeah. Michael was just as good as his dad. Maybe not as good as his dad, but Michael didn't let down, right? Like Michael won championships. Dale Jr. has never won a championship in, in Cup, right? So, uh, anyways, um, he might yeah, go into so he's, IMSA. He's gonna go. Marco. He's gonna go to IMSA, Marco, yeah. and race with his um, race with his cousin. That's pretty cool. Uh, and that's kind of uh, going going back into IndyCar there with the connection there and Santino mm-hmm. Ferrucci moving to NASCAR for 2021 and he yeah. had two full seasons in IndyCar and now he's set to make his move to NASCAR and we spoke a bit about this at the end of season three and that was just a rumor mm-hmm. at this point and I don't recall exactly if I had predicted I feel like I did though uh, I, I feel like there's gonna be some sort of uh, if he's gonna dip his toes I think I was thinking at the time we were saying it's about eight races but he is going to be doing quite a lot more than eight races this season. Yeah, he, isn't he going to be twenty out of the um, thirty-three uh, yeah. races? And uh, you would think, because of his connection with IndyCar, he would race a lot of of the road courses. But um, uh, it's, it's going to be obviously since the the schedule consists of mostly intermediate in mile and a half tracks. So you would think there would be. Because there's there's obviously there's probably like half a dozen road courses in there, so there's mm-hmm. there's obviously more oval stuff. So he's going to be doing some oval, some oval racing, and down in yeah. NASCAR, he's going to be doing some cut, maybe cut racing one day. Yeah, but, but uh, he's not bad, and he's not bad at the oval stuff. Like you know, you make the comment coming from IndyCar and going right, and, and uh, you would expect him to do more of the road courses, but um, you know he's. IndyCar does IndyCar races ovals as well, and he's actually pretty good on the ovals. And I would say that it would be easier tra- to transition from an IndyCar to a Cup car onto an oval 
right. than it would be to drive a cup or not yeah. cup car, sorry, an Xfinity car on a road course. Because those cars, you hear those, like, you hear road race guys like Andy Lally or even Earl Bamber or a couple guys like that drive an Xfinity car on a road course. It's a completely yeah different animal. Oh, like, yeah. It's, not, it's not even in the same realm as a sports car, right? It's break in straight lines, downshift in straight lines, and then turn, right? Like in sports cars, you can break and downshift through a corner at the same time. Um, so I think this would be, I think this would be an easier switch for him. I'm just really surprised that somebody didn't pick him up in IndyCar. Right. I mean, he's yeah. a, he's a good, you know, Unless it was a s- situation where he chose, say, hey, maybe, you know what, this is what I want to do. You know, I, was, More money. I did what I could in Indy and want to try this. Race yeah. with the good old boys. There's more money in in NASCAR than there is in IndyCar, that's for sure. And I think it's going to be cool to watch. I'm going to – I already watch Xfinity Series races anyways, but it almost yeah. is like – that's cool. It adds to it. Another yeah. element. Like I like people – I like – for me, I like when drivers jump between – uh, the series, just like how Jimmy's going to, to IndyCar. I, I like that. I like that you can see some diverse drivers, drivers that have skill. Like they, they, they have, obviously they can race anything kind of mentality. Well, um, that's old school, right? <laughs> yeah. That's old school. Uh, look at Jim, Jim Clark, uh, you know, Formula One. He'd race Formula One and Formula Two on the same day. You know, he'd go he'd run the British touring car races if they supported the Formula One race in the same weekend. On the same day, uh, he'd come over and do IndyCar. He won the Indy 500. Um, there wasn't a car or series that those the older generation didn't jump in and, and do, right? They weren't a Formula One driver. They weren't an endurance driver. They were a racer, and they just raced. And, and that kind of reminds me of Larson. Um, yeah, you know he 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 will race anything, and and that's a part of his stick too. If he's gonna if he's gonna sign to a team, he's gonna make sure he's gonna be able to do any racing he can on the side. And we've seen him all the past year with him racing uh, and winning lots of dirt mm-hmm. races, and this past weekend uh, winning his second consecutive Chili Bowl National, leading yeah. all fifty five laps, and having Bell behind him and. There, uh, there was he had a couple other people that uh, were were looking to get up there. Christopher Bell, though, he had a pretty bad wreck, though. He he uh, mm-hmm. hit the, he hit the rut, a rut in up uh, in the shitty part of the dirt, and he rolled over three times, ending his race. He was uninjured, though. He's good. Um, Justin That's Grant uh, finished second to Kyle uh, Kyle Larson. He was looking on his inside a lot throughout the race, and Stenhouse, <laughs> who won the B main earlier in the evening, he. He finished seventh in the in that uh, main there though, but uh, unfortunately with Chase Elliott, he finished seventh in the F main the other night and he did not advance into the main show. But that uh, that ended his first Chili Bowl Nationals experience. And he did say on Mav TV with Bob Diller, he does intend to return at some point. Hopefully, obviously next year, but maybe somewhere down the road. And mm-hmm. and, and that's going to be really cool to see potentially uh, uh, unfold. With what's going to happen uh, going on during the season, and maybe uh, with, with Kyle Larson, that is, and maybe seeing him yeah. have some sort of momentum going into stepping into number five. And I'll tell you what, ring the ring the bandwagon jumper siren because I have <laughs> I already need to get already. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I already have some stuff on maybe potentially on the way of number five gear. So, Kyle, really? Yeah, I, I was a five. I have. A, I'm. A, I was a five fan as a child, so I feel like it. Uh, it makes sense and. Oh, you're then, still a child, so yeah. Yeah, there you go. I'm just, I'm just kidding. There you go. No, that's good. I'm excited for, I'm excited for Kyle to be back. And just a little sidebar, a little tidbit, a little, bo- little fun fact in case our listeners or you might not even know this. Car- Kyle Larson has run the Daytona 24 in the past, so you know maybe we'll see him back again back in there. Yeah. Um, S- somehow. Get not with Chip Ganassi though. Probably not with Chip Ganassi, yeah. but. You never know. And then, uh, so, uh, 
as we have a, a few more minutes here, just to wrap up the show, just a couple quick things. It's real cool to see. Um, <laughs> it's really cool to see Pitbull enter the sport. So in a crazy hmm. year with yeah. Michael Jordan and Pitbull, uh, both becoming the uh, team owners in, in one sense or another, if they're part team owners or yeah. whatever, uh, seeing this, uh, you know, some celebrities make some, make some interest in NASCAR. I think that's mm-hmm. really cool. But, uh, you know, yeah. I worry about sometimes celebrities, they, they lose interest in things and then they, they won't put the money toward it. So that's what I worry right. about. I would worry about Michael Jordan or Pitbull saying a few years down the road, Hey, you know what? I, I don't want to commit to this. So uh, hopefully, though, that doesn't happen and they're, the sport's opening up. So, yeah, I, I you know what? I, I'm more confident in Michael jo- Jordan's team ownership than I am Pitbull's. You know, Michael and Denny have been friends for for years. Right. So there's a stronger, bigger connection there. That's not unusual. I mean, it's crazy to see Michael Jordan come in, but it's kind of understandable because of Denny. But where the hell did Pitbull come from? Yeah. I didn't know. Well, cause know. just because he did the NBC <laughs> intro, he did that song uh, this past season for NBC for NASCAR. And I forget what song it was, but he did a song oh. for them. And I guess like that kind of tied him in. And he said, oh, I've been a fan for years, but you always hear that from people, I think. But, yeah. Um, so there's yeah. that. Well, actually, uh, we'll get to the entry list in a little while, in a, in a couple of weeks. We won't get to it today, but um, a couple more things here. Uh, we were doing like a movie review thing before mm-hmm. we ended off uh, last season, but like yeah. going to continue on that, uh, motorsports or racing or something to do with cars, uh, any sort of movie or whatever. And th- In fact, we've got a documentary here from the National Film Board of Canada on YouTube. Check it out, called the devil at your heel heels. And it's about Canadian stuntman Ken Carter and, uh, in his attempt mm. to jump the St. Lawrence, St. Lawrence river, uh, he built the. It's really cool. And it feels like you're watching the office. It is set. These, these, these people involved are like characters. It's, it feels like I'm watching trailer park boys. Like you got these random stunt coordinators and cameramen. And it really feels like a legitimate, like it feels like it could have been a scripted movie, but it's not. And, he ultimately didn't end up making the jump, though, and there's there was talk about it was like a movie. It's like he chose he didn't not make to do it. Or it. He didn't, he do, didn't it. do it, and someone else did it. So check that no. out. It's it's pretty funny though. Oh, I gotta watch um, it then. But it, it was a big jump. It was like a few football fields. I forget what the. It was like a. It was a massive. It's this, it's a river. He was jumping. It wasn't yeah, like a yeah. little canal. So I suggest people check that. out. It's pretty cool. It, it he has a he's a drives cars for a living, and he made a, a living off of that doing stunts and there was actually a lot of local racetracks uh Cayuga was in one and he's done a lot of stuff at uh Jucasa Cayuga Jucasa back then mm-hmm. Cayuga so uh he was locally known here too so to, and maybe for people abroad that don't know the character from Toy Story 4 uh Duke Kaboom was based off of Ken Carter so to check awesome. that out I think it's that's a awesome. that is a Wide World of Motorsports approved movie for the the our movie club well, I'll have to check that one out because I haven't seen you it. Got to, and, um, it's free on YouTube. Uh, Alexa, turn on the movie. Um, yeah. Let's I'll end it off it though. Out. Let's uh, let's grill this this kid one. Fifteen year old. Um, <laughs> yes, I heard about this. <laughs> I think I think his name is Taylor Gray, and he was doing a testing for the Arca series at Daytona, and he wanted to upload a selfie at the backstretch. He was driving. He was sending it. And he wanted to upload a selfie to Snapchat. So uh, drivers have been penalized in the past for that rule infraction before. And probably not yeah. a good idea going over 170 miles per hour. Yeah, not too bright. Not Kids too these bright. these days, man. What's going on with that? I don't know. I guess it's better than Tide Pods. Yeah. That, <laughs> oh, man. I guess it is. <laughs> or whatever else. What else What else are they doing these days? Who knows? Uh, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm too busy on iRacing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, people check out uh, the Mayhem Racing League podcast right up next. That is on the schedule for today. Uh, we will be back at you in the next couple of weeks. Check out the Wide World Motorsports on social media at the WWOMS.
All right, we are here after a, a long time almost. It's been a few weeks since we've done the last Mayhem Racing League podcast. And uh, we're here with David and Seth of the Mayhem Racing League. Hey, guys, it's been a while. Hey, David. Thank you for having me. Yeah, good to be back. I know we had uh, some holidays mixed in there and busy time, but good to be back. A couple week break, and we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, um, a lot of good racing, too, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we have. We had a lot of good league races and uh, all-star races as well, which was a spectacular event. We can get into that and talk about that, too. First off, let's give our uh, shout-out to Hendrix Home Improvements. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Um, always an honor to be here with you all. And, uh, yeah, very excited to get uh, caught up here with this podcast. Yeah, lots of um, lots of stuff to cover. We can only cover so much in one episode here, which is good. So we'll have some more uh, we'll have some more content down the road. But uh, that I got to bring up that all star race. We we ran a good chunk of that clean, and that was awesome. Yeah, I think we hit our first yellow. Sorry, Dave. I think we hit the first yellow about lap seventy four. I think give or take it was. That's a that's a real good run. Yeah, it seemed like forever. Uh, I mean, I was super duper surprised by it. Uh, I was figuring first ten laps or so we would see something happen, but uh, we got 15, 20 deep, and I, I was sitting there thinking to myself, holy crap, like nothing. I mean, just clean side by side, and it was awesome. Yeah, I know it was lap 74-ish because I know I needed a yellow around lap 30 because I was already out of the race. So I was dying waiting for that, and it, and it finally came, but way too late for me to have a chance and, and regroup. Yeah, I had a, I had a blast, in and I think I got caught up in some stuff. I don't exactly remember how the race went down and what has gone on since then, but uh, it was a was a heck of a run by uh, by everyone involved. I figured to to play it safe in the back and just kind of, you know, let let the car come to me and race the track. And uh, I was able to get the hard charger award, which was really cool. And something that I consider myself good at in any racing game or sim is I always like to start from the back and race my way up. And there's just something fun about it. I'm better doing that than keeping the pace. Like if I were to qualify... I feel like I need to race harder to keep in the top five, but if I race from the back and just kind of take my uh, take my advantages with people's misfortunes and all that stuff, I, uh, I was able to find myself up in the the uh, the running there for the win in the last uh, couple of laps. There was a yellow, and it came down to me and Hickson at, at the front row, and uh, it, I maybe got a little cocky telling Seth that he might have to pay a couple extra bucks to. Uh, <laughs> to pay for shipping to Canada. Maybe that was my jinx, but whatever. It was fun. It was great. And I'm sure, uh, as you said, Seth, there's going to be probably some more all-star races down the road. Yeah. I'm looking now. I know we got two races left in Mazda season. I'm looking to put together an all-star event for that. Probably be uh, one, one road and one oval. I'm trying to figure that out. I think we'll do like uh, your, your finishing position is your points totals and add them together. And whoever gets the least number would maybe be the champ in that. And, um, I know some of the other series uh, coming up. I'm looking the ARCA series is starting. We'll get into that later in the episode. And I have a week built into that for an all-star race as well. Yeah, that, that'll be uh, that'll be something that's cool. And, and for everybody that's members, they that kind of gives a little bit of incentive to run races. Yeah, to be eligible for the all-star events, you'll have to have scored points in that series. Um, the one other idea we came up with, and we're kind of throwing a bunch of things around. We got a lot of other special events we're planning on. We were looking at some other different series and fun series. I know a couple of the endurance series we thought about. And then uh, I've been throwing around with some of the other guys a possibility of doing a, a series that's going to be a fun series. And it'll be every couple weeks or something. But it'll be a, an all-around um, jack-of-all-trades type series um, where we would race all sorts of different cars, all sorts of different styles of courses, um, and then add the points up at the end. So you'd have dirt racing oval, dirt racing road, asphalt, oval, road. Uh, you know, different cars and everything and just do a little bit of kind of mayhem with it. Yeah, the fun runs are really cool. Yeah, the fun runs. Um, sorry, I had to jump in real quick with the uh, – gotta, I got to go back to the uh, All-Star Race here. Uh, then, and then back to your fun runs. Sorry, I, I forgot to talk there for a second. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the um, you, you didn't get the uh, Hard Charger Award. And um, the, there's a couple others going out, you know, um, the, the, the Halfway Award, uh, D3 with the Mr. Clean which was an impeccable run, by the way. And then uh, Jesse Baker with the Hard Luck Award. I wanted to make sure to give him a shout-out. Um, sorry for jumping back there. No, that's good. We, um, we should have we should have shouted them out. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, so, so sorry. But, um, yeah, definitely wanted to highlight on them. Um, and I think we had uh, – there's one more on there. Uh, nope, it's the Hard Luck. Uh, just kidding. 
um <laughs> yeah but the uh the 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 mazda all-star race i'm kind of pumped about we're gonna get uh, hhi on board a little bit with that too with uh some awards because like you guys said we want to make it gratifying and uh also get people interested in other aspects of i racing yeah it's always good to have those little extra things that uh, add some incentive and it's fun you know it's cool to be able to put something up like i put my uh my street stock sees the the season one top 10 uh, sticker i threw that up on my uh my nascar collection and stuff so really proud of that yeah and i know dave sent some sent some of the awards out already was working on getting those out and the trophy was ordered and sent out to to hickson he won he won that one for being the overall winner in the race so a lot of a lot of free giveaways in this um league and, and in the series and a lot more to come yeah so speaking- man, as of right now uh, everything's getting made and getting ready to be sent out i think here in the next couple of days i don't know why we always run behind with that stuff <laughs> Hey, we're uh, we're we're uh, we're not a paid staff, that's for sure. So maybe that's why. But speaking of what's coming down in the future, we uh, we've been behind the scenes working on season three for the HHI Street Stock Grassroots Tour, as well as the Mazdas, and uh, there, there's some cool stuff coming up with those series. What's some of the stuff in the Mazdas for season three? Yes, let me bring that up. I got trying to work on some of the uh, the layout of the of the track rotation. I'm um, debating on what we're going to do. We've been running 50-50 oval and uh, road. I know we got a lot of road-based guys and a lot of oval guys. We might might go a little bit heavier on the oval this time, maybe a 60-40 on that. Looking at a 12-race season again for season three, some of the tracks I've considered, I know we put a league poll up to see who owned what tracks. Um, right now we're looking at for road, Watkins Glen, Lock, excuse me, Watkins Glen, Laguna Seca, Daytona Road, Charlotte Roval, um, and then for the oval tracks, Bristol is going to make its premiere in the Mazdas. That's going to be a track. Bristol is going to be running all the nice. series that we have. That's kind of our first real paid one. I know Watkins Glen, a lot of guys had as well. Um, Phoenix Concord again, which is a great track for Mazda legacy, Charlotte and legacy Phoenix so far. Yeah, so definitely. The, fun. the circle tracks are my thing. So, uh, ovals. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. So we, if it's a 12 race season, we might, we usually go six, six. This one might be like a seven, five, maybe this time, um, seven ovals and five road tracks. And then I know street stock Jordan. I asked you for a little bit of help on that one. You've been working on laying that one out and we've been bouncing some ideas off. I think we decided 11 race season, 12 weeks with an all-star yeah. race. Yeah. There's some and elements think, and ideas combined from other series. Yeah. We're going to run, uh, I can't remember the exact number we had planned out, but it's going to be a dirt track, um, this season. Yep, uh, throwing in a dirt in there, um, just to kind of get a feel of all the all the types of racing that we've done. I know we don't have a dirt league, but it'd be cool to dip our toes in that, and I figured that'd be really cool to, uh, even though it's a different car we'll have to run, but they're the same cars, basically, just the dirt street stock is just a bit more beefier. Yeah, and a little. Uh, sorry, that plan, too, is to kind of mimic what the NASCAR is doing this year, doing, yeah. they're going to Bristol on the dirt, so we figured it'd be a good way to celebrate that and throw it in there as well. He'll begin off with Concord with round one, round two, Legacy Charlotte, round three at Oran, uh, hoping we'll be able to find a setup for that, uh, round four, USA Dirt, round five, Oxford, round six at Charlotte, and then there will be a break for the All-Star, and that will be at Bristol for 100 laps, um, but there are other things like that, like let's say if I racing adds in Dirt, I'm sure that would be something that would be, uh, they're talking about adding in Dirt for Bristol before that that race in march or april for nascar so hopefully there will be a dirt layout for bristol maybe we can consider that and then once that's done round seven legacy phoenix round eight southern national and we're going to go into our final stretch of races round nine legacy daytona round 10 legacy daytona super speedway so round nine would be the road course and then round 11 concord to round that off now that's just to be determined of course Things are going to be changing up with that. Not nothing set in stone, but that's that's something we're kind of batting around for that series. Yeah, and after last season, there we ran uh, Daytona Oval, and that's definitely going to be on the season. That was one of the best races I've been in for street stocks. Yeah, it came down to some strategy, and it was a long race. It, it almost felt like a bit of a an endurance challenge. Absolutely, but it was a fun one. It was a good one. So Arca season is coming up as well, where it's going to be our new. New car, new series we're adding for the I'm season. Excited. That's going to be a little bit longer. It's going to be, I think we have it set at 18 races. Um, I'm just looking, I'm pulling the schedule up on iRacing right now. 
Yeah. I'm 18 races. We're going all over the place, including some uh, couple of road courses. There's ovals. There's short tracks. It's going to have a little bit of everything in that one. And we got some special things lined up for the opener um, for Daytona. It's going to be our opening race. Um, the actual race will be on February uh, 14th, but two weeks before I think it is. I got to look. We got to get this pumped out there, everybody. We're going to do a couple of like twin 25s, kind of like the Gatorade 125s, where that's going to determine your qualifying position for the Daytona Premier Race, the Daytona 85 for the league race. Kind of run it like a real, real world Daytona race, Daytona 500. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, this this was after a lot of collaboration uh, behind closed doors and kind of, uh, I don't want to say closed doors, it's kind of wrong to say, but um, just a lot of teamwork and collaboration to kind of come up with an interesting way to make it a unique opener and kind of set the stage to make it what we want um, as far as appealing to draw in you know, not only talent, but to keep everyone moving in the right direction with development. So I think it's freaking awesome. Uh, and I, can, I really can't wait. <laughs> And also with the some of the content that's going to be in that schedule, it's obviously something that people are going to have to pay for. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because these tracks are we're going to commit to. Something you see in other leagues is some of these things fall through and, you know, you don't see that commitment to a track in a season. So with some of these tracks, a lot of people actually had, but some people that didn't, it is worth to get. And some of these tracks are also useful in the official sessions. So if people want to advance through to their next license these are good tracks to have yeah definitely and seth went uh above and beyond to keep everyone in mind um all budgets and, and everything like that uh was paramount in, in his decision making which is awesome um and and there's nothing ridiculous about you know asking you to buy bristol or talladega because i think they're all sought after tracks pretty worse really. tracks yep yeah and we're we're you know we're going to be leaning with the points we're going to be understanding if you don't want to purchase uh you know, we'll do a bye week or something, make it to where it's not that effective on your on your point standing. So, uh, at the end of the day, it's all about understanding, communicating, and getting better. So. Yeah, I think a plan we had come up with too. I think there's, without going through every track, maybe six paid tracks in this season: Watkins Glen, Pocono, just name a few: Bristol, Talladega, Iowa. If you don't have that track and you're going to run the series, all you got to do is let us know that week of, and we'll give you a provisional <laughs> points, which would be just last place points. Just as if you were in the in the uh, race, so that way you can stay in the point standings. Um, we did come up with a great idea in this series for ARCA to keep the points rolling. I know like in NASCAR near the end of the season, some guys are kind of not really competitive because it doesn't really mean much. So what we're going to do is the, we're going to have a Tier 1 and a Tier 2 trophy um, for the points championship. Tier 1, when we get to the last four races of the season, points are going to reset for everybody. Um, and the last four races of the season will be points towards the championship. All those points will count. Um, and what's going to be is tier one will be before those last four races, whoever's first through eighth. So one through eight will compete for the overall league championship. And then ninth through whoever is remaining in the standings will get reset and race for the tier two championship. So we'll have technically two champions, but we want to okay. do it just so everybody has a chance to compete and win a trophy as well. And, that way, guys don't feel like you're left out and start dropping out of the races near the nice. end. Nice, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, with these series starting at 8 p.m., so there's going to be a heads up to some of the MRL members right now. Is the street stocks will be moved to seven? A little bit of a time change. Yeah, a little bit of a time change. Correct. We're going to run both series on Sunday night. Street stocks will start at seven, and the uh, arc will be at eight. And the way we're going to change street stocks to make sure everybody can run street stocks but still make the ARCA race is we'll start at seven, have a half hour of practice, um, and then we'll which will probably be qualifying in or we'll do twenty minutes and then qualifying. We'll, we'll run a half hour race, so it'll be a thirty minute race. So and it comes down to the end, we'll be able to clean up and get out of there and get back into the eight o'clock ARCA race. Yeah, that uh, first, sounds pretty uh, cool. First couple, you know, might be a trial and error thing. We have yeah, to learn as we go, but uh, we're definitely going to figure it out. So. Yeah. So there's uh, the other thing I mentioned real quick is there's a couple off weeks coming up in Mayhem Racing League. We have football playoffs coming up next week, um, which is divisional championships coming up. So we're going to be off racing uh, next Sunday. There won't be any races on the schedule. And then the following week, we're going to do that those twin 25 Daytona races, and I'll have information on that. It's going to be a great little setup. And then we'll be off for the Super Bowl. And then on the 14th, we'll be running a doubleheader with Street Stock and then a Daytona. And just real quick on that, Daytona qualifying, we'll have sign-ups and everything, get you guys. I'm going to do some sort of a random draw to see what heat race you get put in. We'll figure out a way to do this, but we'll run two heat races that night. 
two 25 lap heats. The heat races are going to determine the starting grid. So heat one will be first position. Heat two, the winner will draw position two. And we'll alter all the way back through the standings um, to get that lined up for the Daytona. That way we'll be two weeks out. We'll have a starting grid and really get some cool things out for some of the starting grid things. Nice. There'll be lots of and fun we'll, up ahead for the MRL. Yeah, and after that heat race that night, we'll run a practice race too. Just whatever, some laps where everybody can get together. It's a big, huge field and have some fun. Right. Yeah, it's going to uh, be pretty sick. It's going to be awesome. And I think we're setting up the um, n- not only street stock, but uh, I think Mazda's going to grow and Arca's going to grow to be a beast because uh, it's the best of best in both worlds. And uh, we have Seth behind the wheel driving us all forward. So uh, I think we're pretty good. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. Um, speaking of the group growing, even right now, there's uh, there's a there's so cool collaborations from some of the members right now. Just ideas, even of a new potential logo. Um, check out the Mayhem Race to League on Facebook. Give it a give it a like. Give it a join. Send a message to Seth or some of the other admins. Get yourself set up with the league on the iRacing League directories. Check out Mayhem Racing League as well. Um, yeah, that's a, there's some cool stuff going on there, like the Mayhem Racing League podcast. Seth posts uh, the uh, some pretty cool articles after races during the week, and there's even some guys that are printing that out. So, yeah, we have Mike, Mike Durfee just joined us. He's part of the admin group. I'll have, have him jump in. Um, but we got a lot of fun things coming up, and a lot of a lot of cool things moving forward. Ooh, how about them Bills? <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's the closest NFL team to me, other than Detroit. So yeah, I'll jump on that one. Yeah. God, I'm going to have a heart attack here. Jeez. I don't know if I can survive these last two games. I lived through the 90s <laughs> and I still wake up with night terrors. <laughs> oh, Sorry, I didn't mean that. You oh, got to shout out no, the football team. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike Mike joining us at the end here. Uh, we uh, any, <laughs> any two cents from you for uh, before we end this recording here, Mike? No, none at all. I just jumped on to listen because I didn't even know what was going on. So I don't want to double up on what you guys already did a great job covering, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll, just, sorry, I'll just put it out there, too, for anybody who's listening and anybody that joins the league or is currently in the league. Or, you know, our league's not run as a dictatorship. It's not me making every decision or thinking up the ideas. So if anybody has any ideas for anything you think you want to see or you think it's an improvement or scheduling whatever races tracks whatever you want just throw it out there post it on the uh on the facebook page mayhem racing league or send me a message and and we'll get your ideas in there it's definitely for you guys and for everybody and that's kind of the way it's run yeah definitely i second that uh it's definitely a group effort um a lot of communication and all you gotta do is you know speak up have your voice heard and we definitely pay attention to you so if you got any opinions to make it better or you want to see it go in a slightly different direction or you want something ran or you want to add a car. I mean, heck, we're always talking about adding, trying to develop stuff, so let's talk. Yeah, like, it's almost like it feels like a snowball in some ways. Like, it's not, the league began off something that was so small, and because there's such cool camaraderie with everybody and people feel that they can, you know, they're in a comfortable position where they can make these suggestions. There's a lot of cool collaboration, too. And, and just looking off the Facebook page just the last couple of days, you know, people giving their ideas for even... You know, a new logo or something like that. It's, it's a real cool sense of community. Oh, yes, that's what we were talking about, the logo. Um, I'm really excited about the logo. I saw some posts just not too long ago. Um, yeah, if you guys are interested, throw them up, and let's see what we get and start something new. All righty, sounds good. All right, that just about wraps it up for another edition of the Mayhem Racing League. Be sure to check out the Mayhem Racing League on Facebook and, of course, on the iRacing League directories. And stay tuned to future episodes of the Wide World of Motorsports podcast, as following that will be new episodes of the Mayhem Racing League podcast. Hi, this is Alex Tagliani, NASCAR Pinty Series Driver. You're tuned in from the track to the community on Wide World of Motorsports, the number one motorsport show in the community. Sports show in the community. Sports show in the community. Sports show in the community.